Hello and welcome. Uh, my name is Robert Cribb. I'm the convener of the Southeast Asia Institute here at the Australian National University. With me in the studio th uh, this evening is Dr. Surin Pitsuan, the Secretary General of the Association of Southeast Asian Nations, ASEAN. Good afternoon, Dr. Surin. Thank you very much for, afternoon, uh, for joining us. It's a pleasure. I wanted to begin by asking, as you look back on the last five years, what would you identify as the most important achievements of ASEAN? Well, the fact that I think we could uh, establish ourselves in the landscape of East Asia to be the central mechanism, to be the centrality of the evolution of East Asia. Now, our charter which came into force in 2008, coincided with the economic downturn mm. globally, particularly Europe and America, and then the attention shifted toward East Asia. That's when we were trying to play that role of connecting, of coordinating, of trying to uh, promote also not only ASEAN, but ASEAN as the heart of East Asia. And I think it's been recognized as such. And uh, I think we have raised a high level of confidence about the region. Mm -hmm. We have a lot of problems, but we manage those problems together. And certainly Australia has been a part of that process of supporting us, our role of trying to help maintain and manage some of the challenges that we are facing in the region. Thank you. What, what would you see as the most important challenges facing ASEAN over the coming five years? I think uh, trying to bridge the gap among ourselves. You know, its economic gap is very wide yes. from the new member states uh, with the per capita income of less than $1,000 a year per capita to 50, uh, 45, 50 thousand US dollars a year. Yes. Uh, you know, Singapore and Brunei, that gap and everything, everybody else is in between. That gap is very, very wide. Uh, we are at risk of being a two-tier ASEAN, which is not going to be conducive to serve as the basis for a community, or even to continue to play this central role of evolving East Asia into a larger one integrated marketplace, Australia is in there. Yes. Uh, you know, ASEAN plus six yes. as an economic uh, unit, economic architecture, and then ASEAN plus eight, including the US and Russia as a strategic and political uh, architecture. Uh, so uh, to serve as the centerpiece, you have to have a very, very consolidated center. Yes. ASEAN is at risk of that. We also know and uh, that uh, you know, some of our economies are at risk of being caught in this middle income trap. Yes. And we have to work very hard in order to transform our economies, those that can do, those mm. that are at that stage, uh, to become more innovative, more creative, more uh, knowledge-based, more technology and science-based in order to get away from the labor intensive uh, you know low uh, price of commodity abundance mm -hmm. abundance uh, materials uh, because that's the model that china can do india can do and the rest of the world can do yes. it's quick and fast yes. but we need to be more productive we need to be more uh, to produce more technology and more uh, more science in order to serve our research, our design, our development, our innovation. That's what ASEAN is doing and uh, we are at risk of not being able to achieve that. That's why the relationship with countries like Australia, Japan, Korea, the EU, extremely important to us so that we can somehow reconfigure our economies yes and put ourselves on a better platform to move forward into a more competitive, competitive global market. That's, I can see. It's, it's also been suggested that uh, the rise of China will put significant strains on mm -hmm. ASEAN, particularly as lines of communication develop in mainland Southeast Asia, yeah. the economic integration of the mainland with, uh, with China becomes mm. more intense. Mm. 
uh, there is, it's been suggested, for instance, that uh, that will create strains within ASEAN between mainland and offshore. Mm. Uh, I wonder how significant you see that pressure being. I think ASEAN has been very good at adjusting to the changing environment. Mm. Uh, you know, in the past, we have accomplished this task of trying to keep peace among ourselves, trying to contain any differences that we have. I couldn't imagine Southeast Asia without ASEAN. Yeah. So it's, it's the achievement for the past, past 45 years has been well recognized. But then the landscape has been opened up, more players coming in, precisely because East Asia has become more important to the world. A lot of players are coming in to stake the claim, to play a role, to promote interest, to protect the interests in the region. Yes. And all these things are happening on the stage of ASEAN, on the forum of ASEAN, mm -hmm. uh, stress and strain. Uh, yes. So we have to play that role of balancing the opposing, contending pressures coming from around, around the world. Uh, we will get through this and, uh, you know, again, with dialogue partners who also have an interest of maintaining stability, security and peace in East Asia, we will be able to accommodate and handle. And, um, you know, we go through phrases, phases. Um, you know, Henry Kissinger once observed that um, East Asia, as far as economic development, as far as innovation, uh, our concern, it's really 20th century Europe. He said this last year, last yes. century. But then he said, as far as institutions, processes and systems, to take care of the problems, potential problems that could occur among the countries and states of East Asia themselves, they are still 19th century Europe. Yes. We have been trusted into that role of trying to balance, trying to uh, be the fulcrum of contending power plays in the region. Yes. Uh, and we have found ourselves that we are not playing that fulcrum, but we are also trying to balance ourselves with some of the yes. major powers around yes. us uh, coming uh, far away into our region. But these are the things, the roles that I think uh, we will be able to play uh, well, effectively, with the support, with the cooperation of uh, our dialogue partners, mm. uh, Australia, uh, as an example. But also, as I said, we go through phases. You know, now many of the major powers realize that it's in the be best interest of everyone to help ASEAN keep the yes. balance, yes. and that you know some of the posturing, some of the positioning, may have been counterproductive. And, yes. uh, you know, uh, we have seen them, you know, trying to, to step back and try to find a better way forward. Yes. ASEAN's achievements in, in the region mm. are really very impressive. But I wonder if you see a prospect for ASEAN engagement with Africa. If we go back to the 1950s, Africa and Southeast Asia mm. looked rather comparable mm. then Southeast Asia took off and Africa did mm. not. Yeah. But it appears that Africa is now on the verge of a recovery that might mm. help it to mm. emulate Southeast Asia. Mm. I wonder if you see Southeast Asia, as, or ASEAN specifically, as playing a role in African development. Mm. Well, ASEAN have been traveling on two roads. Yes. One is trying to evolve, trying to open up our political systems. We began in 1967 with almost all of us were very centralized, oh, yes. very authoritarian. Now all of us are opening up mm. and, you know, the process of democracy participation uh, has, has certainly seen a lot of development. Mm. Uh, so we can say that politically ASEAN has been on that road of opening up, of um, participation of um, democratization rather steadily. On the other road is economic development. We also have achieved a great deal of uh, uh, prosperity. We are impressed with the way in which the African Union is working on the issues of peace, mm -hmm. of security, of reconciliation, 
they are very quick, very active, and mm -hmm. very much uh, together in trying to resolve some of the conflicts on the continent. Uh, they are impressed with the way in which we handle our economic yes. uh, transformation, our economic cooperation, our economic agenda. And in fact, there has been a communication between ASEAN and the AU okay. on the yes. political level. And uh, I think as Africa opens up and prospers and stabilizes, certainly uh, ASEAN countries can benefit from the resources from the commodities, yes. and they certainly can benefit from the way in which we do our economic coordination, our economic management, our economic uh, uh, cooperation in the region. I yes. see a lot of a lot of common issues that we can work together. Yes, yes I can foresee there's a lot of future potential mm. collaboration yes. in yes. that area. Yes. Are there any lessons for ASEAN from the current crisis in the European Union, do you think? Well, I don't know if you call it a lesson, but the issue of single currency has never been on the, on the yes. table for ASEAN because yeah. we are very different, you know, coming from very diverse uh, uh, kinds of economies, governance, uh, economic systems. Uh, if anything, it certainly has given us a, 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 uh, a confirmation that, you know, don't hurry. <laughs> yes. Don't, you know, don't make, don't be too hasty in the direction of a single currency. It has never been on the agenda anyway, one. The second one is we have to realize that Europe came from the background of functional cooperation. Bigger uh, countries got together to work on some of the issues, coal, steel, yes. energy, uh, and then they were able to bring smaller countries to mm. be part of that architecture. ASEAN began with small and medium-sized you know, countries uh, coming together and trying to find a stage for ourselves so that we won't be overwhelmed or overshadowed by the characters who attended the Bandung conference. Yes. Yeah, the Afro-Asia uh, uh, conference. Uh, yes, Sukarno was there. Of course, yes. Uh, Nasser of Egypt was there, Nehru of India was there, Tito, yeah. and Nkrumahs and all yes. those big people, Joe and Lai. Mm. Uh, small countries in Southeast Asia got together and, and decided that we need a stage, we need a platform, that we can be ourselves, mm. that we won't lose our identities. So, um, ASEAN is still coming from a vast diversity together. We still have to manage that diversity among ourselves. Yeah. Europe has been able to, you know, widen their membership to 27 and have, have done very well, but uh, they have run into problems. Mm. So we are learning the positive uh, achievements of Europe we are also learning from the failures of Europe. I have always been saying, Europe is our inspiration. It is not our model. Yes. Yeah. You're, you're coming to the end of a very successful term as ASEAN yeah. Secretary General. What does the future hold for you? What do you plan to do when well, you... Uh, so the issue of ASEAN integration, the issue of East Asia evolution, into a community, even though a small C community, mm. you know, knitting our economies together, promoting a sense of community in East Asia is a full-time job, it's a lifetime job. Yes. And I will continue to certainly be a champion of these two, uh, ASEAN integration, community building, yeah. East Asia cooperation. I think I have established enough of a network of a credibility that, uh, you know, I can make a contribution without having any position, without mm. having any personal interest in any of these things. But I think East Asia, much like Schumann did for the European yes. Union, he doesn't have, he didn't, he was not a, an officer, mm. but he was outside, you know, pushing and, and, and yes. helping and trying to encourage the process to move yes. forward. I think ASEAN East Asia would need some kind of encouragement, personalities from outside. I can see myself playing that role into the future. That's very encouraging. Mm -hmm. Dr. Surin, thank you very much for joining us. Thank you, us. sir. Thank you. It's a pleasure. <laughs>